All right. Uh, today's lesson is Unit 5.1. We're finally moving on to doing some problems using work. Uh, the basic equation for work is nothing but work is equal to force times distance. And you will notice this use of the letter S for the first time. Now, in past problems, we've been using both X and Y a lot. But technically, both of these we're using to represent displacements. Now, in the case of a work problem, it's not like displacement. Displacement was simply the relationship of two points, say point A and point B. Now, we didn't care the path that something took. What we're actually looking for in this problem is this distance. We actually want to know the distance. And believe it or not, it's this little picture that's always helped me remember that S is distance because I think about this wavy line right here. But anyhow, one of the most common things we can do is just like have somebody hold something up in their hand for a little while, hold something heavy. Now, you might get really tired. You might, oh, I'm getting so tired. But the thing is, you have it, actually haven't done any work. Because there actually has to be motion. There has to be a distance involved in the problem for work to be done. Now, the other thing we have to consider is a problem, for example, where something is pulled at an angle. Say, I think one of my basic examples in 10th grade is like a, somebody pulling a wagon with a handle like this. And so we got somebody over here pulling on their wagon. So here's somebody, we'll give them two eyes, that looks a little better. Somebody pulling their wagon. Here's the thing, they're exerting a force on the wagon. But the thing is, that force is not in the direction of the movement. If we look, the wagon is actually moving in this direction. So what we've actually got to do is this. We've actually got to figure out what component of the force is in the x direction. Now, to find this Fx component, it's not really all that hard. All we've got to do to find the component in the direction of the movement is just go F cosine theta. So another equation we'll use along with this Fs is just to say work is also equal to F cosine theta s. Because whenever something's moving at an angle, not all of that force is actually going into making this move. Part of this force is actually lifting the wagon off the ground. So part of the force is picking the wagon up. The other force is actually making the wagon move. So all we're interested in is the part that's actually making the wagon move in this case. So there's two other little types of equations. Now, so we've got W equals Fs, W equals F cosine theta S. Now, we can also take a look at another type of force. you got to think about something. If I just let go of this pin, is there a force being exerted on this pin? Well, yeah, there's a force being exerted on it. Gravity is being exerted on this pin. This pin has weight. So this pin has weight, and here we'll let it go again. If there's a force and a distance, and you can see a distance, that means there's work being done on this pin. So what is doing the work on this pin while I let go of it? Hmm. Well, that would be gravity. So we'll call this work done by gravity, and we've got an equation for it too. We'll write mg y initial minus mg y final down is the work due to gravity. So say, for example, if I work a problem and something is thrown into the air, uh, we could sit here and take a look at it. I might call Y initial at the bottom. I might call this point, hmm, let's call this point zero. And then Y final might be equal to hmm, four meters. So if I threw a two kilogram ball into the air, you should be able to tell me how much work was done because y initial zero, so that gets rid of your mg y initial, so the work done by gravity would be equal to negative mg y final. 
So this would be negative 2 times 9.8 times 4. And all we'd have to do is get our answer back off of that. And that'd be pretty easy enough. All right. So, have you got halfway a little idea of what's going on here? Uh, roughly, we could say roughly 24, roughly around negative 80 joules of energy. And if the answer is negative, it should make sense because if you got to think, would this thing actually slowing down, gravity is actually removing energy from the system as it's going up. Grand, that energy is going to also be returned as it falls back down to the ground. So energy is not created or destroyed. But anyway, we'll sit here and kind of flow this on over for a second. There's one other type of work you might see in these first problems other than work being done by gravity. And that's also work being done by friction, little f. Now, this is what's known as a non-conservative force. Because this work done by friction, it's actually going to remove energy from the system. Now, work is nothing but a force times the distance. So in the case of work done by friction, it's nothing but friction times distance. But since it's non-conservative, I'm going to put a negative sign right here in front of it because it's going to remove energy from the system. All right, I think we're ready. Let's go ahead and do our first example problem, except somebody has stole the calculator I had sitting behind me, so give me half a second. Da, 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 da. So now I have a calculator ready to do my first example problem. Let's take a look at it. Before we do that first problem, let's just review our new equations that we've got right here. Our new equations are work equals Fs, W equals F cosine theta S, work done by gravity is equal to MGY initial minus MG y final and work done by friction is equal to negative fs so there's our new equations let's do this first example that y'all have and this is someone toting a vacuum cleaner so you can see in the picture here this is one where somebody's pulling in an angle i don't think there's any friction or anything in this one so it's going to be a pretty straightforward easy question we'll go ahead and do a little diagram for it though just cause I really like drawing free body diagrams. So this vacuum cleaner has an MG going down. It has a normal force going up and it's got a force at an angle of theta right here. All right, so now this theta is actually 30 degrees and this force up here is 50 Newtons. And this vacuum cleaner gets moved a distance of three meters. All right. And all it wants to know is how much work was done. So work is equal to F. We do have the angle in this one. So I'm going to apply cosine theta S. And so our problem is nothing but 50 times cosine of 30 times three meters. So we'll multiply this together. 50 times a cosine of 30 times three equals 129.9, except that I wrote a two down for some reason. 129.9. Now the unit for work is this. When you multiply a force times a distance, that gives you an answer of newton meters. So a newton times a meter. A newton meter is known as a joule. It's known as a joule. And it's named after a guy named James Prescott Joule is where it gets its unit from. So the answer to this problem for work, 129.9, we could write an answer of either newton meters or we could write 129.9 why did I write two again? 129.9 joules. 
So that would be an example of an answer. What I want for you all to do is numbers one through eight on this first page. And on the next lesson will be unit 5.2. We'll pick up kinetic energy theorem on that one. All right. So anyway, leave you all with a smiley face. Maybe some big ears again. All right. Thank you all. You all be good.